Hi folks, Adrian here from Wargaming for Fun. Going to make a new project now with that of a unique uh, paint rack system to make best use of the space that we have in the studio. Um, I'll outline the problem. Now I can't be the only one with this problem. Well, I possibly can, but I don't think I am. Loads of uh, airbrush paints, loads of model colour paints, loads of Citadel paints, and if I want a certain colour, I've got to then start rummaging. And there's more paints there than I can manage in my mind. So I might come to use Earth, think I've got Earth, and haven't. Then I'll look in my other uh, paint systems and don't come up with that either. So I'm going to build a paint rack system where I can look at the colours at a glance, see what's there, see what's missing. Now, I want the paint rack system to take both this style paint container and that style paint container. They also the P3s, but if he takes both of those, then the P3s will fit on the uh, shelf as well. I also wanted to go in that space there. Now, I have taken some measurements, and that is roughly four foot high and roughly 18 inches wide. But because this house w was built between four and 500 years ago, that wall isn't perfectly vertical compared to the window. They don't run parallel those two lines. So I am going to have to make measure those distances and make it to the narrowest, which is at the top. I'm going to make it out of this 20 millimeter blue foam, just shy of an inch thick. Um, and I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do that. Hope you enjoy folks. So the first step to any project is taking the measurements and if I measure down the bottom there you can see from the wall to the thing to the picture frame sorry almost 18 inches or 45 centimeters or 450 millimeters depending on how you think. If I measure at the top that distance drops you know it's 17 and a half inches this time and under that distance. So I know if I put it in that corner and build a unit to 440 millimeters or just shy of 17 and a half inches, that will fit all the way down. Next measurement I need to take is the height. Now, if I measure from there to there, that is 48 inches from the shelf to there, which is perfect because my board I believe is 120 millimeters tall. So that will fit nicely in there. I won't have to do any cutting. So that is the first important measurement that I need focus. So I'll go and write that down. Now, being a child of the 70s, brought up in a period of time where Britain was swapping from the um, imperial to the metric system, uh, which is feet and inches to millimeters and kilometers, um, I can work in both and I swap between both and I tend to, when using a tape measure, I'll look and choose the one that is closest to. So I might choose three inches, I might choose eight centimetres. To, to me, I will quite happily swap between them. I appreciate though, that's not the case all over the world. If you're in Britain um, or most uh, Europe, I think it's the same for Australia, uh, maybe even Canada, I'm not sure. Um, we tend to use what we call the metric system. Now, as a teacher, I always enforce millimetres in design technology, but school children will also use centimetres. And to get centimetres from millimetres, you just divide by 10. Um, but the game we play is in inches, you know, which is used in America um, and the rest. You can tell on European tape measures you'll get feet and inches and centimetres, like is shown there. When I see one's uh, battle reports and the rest from America, it all seems to be inches. So, you know, use the system that's best for you folks. Probably best to be consistent, um, but this isn't really a video teaching you how to measure. The item that I'm making is bespoke to go up that corner. It's very unlikely you'll have a corner um, the same, or even similar. So, you know, you'll be designing your own and taking your own measurements. All I'm doing here is showing you the process that I use to design and make such an object. I have here the three most popular paint pots on the market at the moment. 
the Valero Air, the P3 paints, uh, which tend to be associated with War Machine. I don't know if they're linked to those or whether they just do the box sets like I've got there. And the Citadel ones that are released through Games Workshop, which as far as I know are the most commonly used. Now, I want my shelves effectively to fit all three. So if I take the height of that, which is three inches or seven and a half centimeters, and the width of that, which is 32, 33 millimeters, inch and a quarter, then that should accommodate all three sizes. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut my shelves probably to 35 millimeters wide to accommodate that and to probably, let's have a look at that, eight centimeters, 80 millimeters high, so I can push those in and take them out and the other will fit in as well, okay? If I was making one just for Citadel paints, then I'd obviously measure the height of that. If I was making one just for this, I'd measure the width, but because I want to make it as flexible as possible, that's the measurements I'm going to do. So let's see how that affects the design. Essentially, I'm going to have blue foam up the back and blue foam shelves cut to 35 millimeters wide. And then the distance between the top of that shelf and the bottom of that one is going to be 80 millimeters. And in that way, it will accommodate those three sizes. And it's just a case of fitting as many of these on as I can. Now, in theory, if it's 1200 millimeters and this is 20 millimeter material, that is 100 millimeters. So I should get 12 shelves going up a 1200 millimeter piece if I divide 1200 by 100. So that's the plan. So I'll start cutting the material, folks, and we'll go into the next step. Okay folks, you can see there the four pieces that I managed to cut off and the overlap, which I'll put aside uh, and use it later on later terrain boards. There's no waste around here. These will make up the shelves that are spaced at 100 millimeter gaps. And each of these lines marks the bottom of a shelf for the paint to go. So that will go on like that and be glued in place. Uh, the glue that I'm going to use is a water-based contact adhesive. I'm using Copydex because it's easily, readily available, but you can use what you like. You could even use PVA, but PVA takes a long time to go off because you can't soak into that material or that material. So you need to allow it for longer to dry than you normally would. Okay, folks, I'll get on. To give each shelf a bit more strength, I've put three screws in one on each end and one in the middle from the back, and that will help Hold it in place while the glue, glue dries. You can see that. Help hold it in place while the glue dries and also give it a bit more strength once it's in place, should it be knocked or anything like that. Important to glue before you paint, folks, because otherwise you're gluing paint to paint rather than styrofoam to styrofoam. Okay, I'll let that dry now. Oh, actually, before I let it dry, we'll do a dry fit. Dry fit just to make sure. And it goes in the place that we want it to. So if I just drop that in there. Like I say, it is a dry fit, folks. There will be some manipulation going, but you can see that the, uh, there's plenty of room for quite a few paints there. Um, I'll uh, get on with painting it. There you go, folks. The finished paint rack, all painted up, uh, paint's gone dry now. You could, if you wanted to, take some glass paper 
and tidy it up so that it was absolutely perfect. I mean, they're just cut with a knife. You get that when you're cutting blue foam if your knife is starting to wane or you're trying to cut it too fast. I'm happy with that, folks. I quite like the look of that roughness. And if I change my mind later, I can always sand it down just to take a millimetre or so off and repaint the face of it again. So now I'm going to attach this to the wall. I will show you that I haven't painted the back, again for the same reasons. I intend to stick this to the wall and I get a better uh, fix if I stick the styrofoam to the wall rather than sticking paint to paint. In order to fix it to the wall, I'm going to use this hard as nails. It's a generic um, no more nails substitute. It's essentially, it's a, an adhesive. Um, I'm going to put a couple of strips of that on the back of this and then stick it to that wall again. Again, I'm sticking it to the wall because I don't want to drill and cut into the uh, substance of the wall. This will take a lot of the weight, the window ledge. Not that there's any weight in it. I mean, it's made from blue foam. The biggest weight by far is going to be the paint stacks on it. So I'm going to stick all that together now and uh, put it in place. The glue is now holding the paint rack in place, the adhesive that is stuck to the wall, and you can see that it fits in there quite nicely. Um, there are gaps, but like I said earlier, that's because of the slope of the house. It's not perfectly square, and you're never going to get that on a house this age. So uh, time to start loading the paints up. What I've done here, folks, is put all my Citadel paints on the bottom and the Valero colour. Uh, range on the top. I've also got some of the uh, specialist paints up there that Valero does as well. The only thing I wasn't able to fit on this was the uh, Valero Air range that I have, so I may have to build another one of these in the end, but I might leave it because I don't use the air very often um, for when I've got a few more paints. Now as I grow the Citadel range, as I buy models and buy them in and other range of paints, then I will start to build over there. It's going to come down to a matter of time. Might make it um, anyway, and then just fill it up over time. But there's the tutorial done, folks. You can see it in use. I've just put some blue tack in on the edges to hold it in place um, while the no more nail sets on the back. Total cost, I'd say, estimating all in, including the screws, you're looking at ten pounds for the uh, rack. Seven pounds for the blue foam, the paint and the screws. Yep, yeah, I'd say all in all about 10 pounds. Okay folks, I hope you found that useful. Catch you on the next tutorial.